Hello everyone, my name is Chris Wilson and I'm going to be the host of today's program. Today we are talking about Gale Legal Forms and it's part of our Connect with Business Databases series. Um, a couple of things that you need to know are um, while we're talking today, you can actually see this from the screen. And you can go on ahead and ask questions today. As I mentioned, we are going to be working with Gale Legal Forms. And unfortunately, my PowerPoint isn't working too well today, but we're going to do the best that we can. So the first thing that we want to do here is that we need to see a couple of other bits of information on here. If I can get it to move forward, I will be happy with that. There we go. Um, like I said, we're going to be working with Gale Legal Forms. This webinar, when it is completed, will be placed on the Kershaw County Library YouTube page. And you always can um, ask questions of me. If I'm not in the building, you can email me. And that email is on your screen right now. So please feel free to email questions at any time. For today's class, if you would like to ask a question, just unmute your mic in the bottom left corner of your screen and you will be able to get on to talk to me. And one more thing, these business classes are also things that are going to include information about locating job information or getting some resumes, that sort of thing. But for today, this Gale Legal Forms is dealing specifically with finding legal forms that you need to use. So I'm going to actually switch over and we're going to take a look at the library's website. And from there, we'll move on into the next part. All right, this is what our library website looks like. And it is one that's located at uh, Kershaw County Library, all spelled out, all pushed together, .org. And you can go to this and you can look at this information anytime that the library is um, closed. You could still get in here from home. A couple of things that you need to know about getting in from home are that you will need to have your Kershaw County Library card to access this. And it might ask you for a PIN number, but there is no PIN that you need to put in. Just leave that box blank. And once you've gone through these next steps, you'll understand why I'm telling you this. So on the library's website, there is a line here that says research and learning. And right below that is one that says e-resources. If you click on e-resources, it's going to open up and it's going to welcome you to the resources page. And then I'm going to move down this page just a little bit and tell you that we have some things grouped by subject. So in this case, since the majority of people that are using Gale legal forms are using it for either a business or a personal information or consumer information, you can actually click on the line that says business and consumer and it will take you down the page quickly. And Gale Legal Forms is on here in alphabetical order. So just move down until you see that. And it's going to tell you that Gale Legal Forms provides state specific legal forms for most legal needs. They can be downloaded and they can be completed and they can be printed. In some cases now, they're actually able to fill them in online and print them. Um, if you're doing that at the library, I would not suggest doing that. I would rather that you print them out because things that are put online sometimes don't go away. So please do, when you're at the library, print them out. At home, it will be on your computer and you may choose how you want to do that. In addition to the legal forms that are on here, you can also look up a legal definition for something. You can consult Law Digest. You can check out the legal question and answer section, and you can even search on the attorney directory. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But these are all things that are available within Gale Legal Forms. So you can either click on the title on the webpage where it says Gale Legal Forms right here, or you can click over here on the picture. So I'm gonna click on the picture and give it just a minute. And it's going to show up and let you see what Gale Legal Forms looks like. 
Now across the very top of the screen, you have a number of things that are up there, but I almost forgot. Let me say something. When you click that title or picture on the library's website, it's going to, from, from your home, it's going to pop up something that says, welcome to Kershaw County Library, and it's going to ask you to put in your library card number and a PIN. Again, that PIN number you can leave blank because it is not necessary. You'll just need to put in your library card number. Once you've done that and clicked on in, this is what you will see. Now the Kershaw County Library actually pays for the use of Gale legal forms. So this is a library based item and not something that's from the state library. It's only from Kershaw County Library. So if you want to use this, you'll have to have your Kershaw County Library card. So again, we'll, we'll start across the top of the page and I'll cover different things as we go. The very top, there's a, a number of little lines across the top up there. Um, one of them says home. So if you get lost in Gale Legal Forms and you just want to go back to the home page, click on home and it will take you back to this page. The second one says about and it has the little I next to it. That's the informational piece. And it's going to tell you more about the database. It's going to tell you what information and forms are available and where they come from, whether they're South Carolina or United States, which equals federal. And there is a little something that you need to know about these forms. And that is if you use one that is from the United States or federal level, please check or consult with somebody, basically an attorney, to make sure that this form is going to work for you because not every U.S. form will work in South Carolina. Just to make sure that it's the right form. And these forms will all range from something very basic or standard all the way up to extremely complex forms. And there is also some information out there about the attorney directory underneath the about. And it will tell you um, some things that are up there. And the attorney directory is something that is very useful. But just to let you know, if you do click into the attorney directory and you select one of those attorneys and you go to talk with them, they will charge you for their time. So just so that you know that they will charge you for the help and just so that you know as well, the library is not part of this. That is Gale Legal Forms that's offering that. The library does not offer that ourselves. So that's just a heads up. <laughs> On the next part, it says FAQ, and those are frequently asked questions. And sometimes if you go to the FAQ, it will actually give you an answer that you need without having to ask for help with something. But please don't hesitate to ask us for help if you need it, especially if you're in the library and I'm here, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Bear in mind, I am not a paralegal. I do not have legal training, therefore I cannot answer any legal questions. That's, does a, that's what attorneys and paralegals are for. I can't answer those questions. I can help you find the form that you need. I can help you print them out, but that is pretty much as far as I can go. So you also might want to print that FAQ page so that you can see what things that you need to do. The next one over is search help. And search help is another one that you might want to print. It gives you step-by-step -step assistance in how to search the database. So it's a nice little piece of paper to have next to you. So you can remember, remember that when you're in this database, you need to search doing this way. Next one over says all state subscriptions. And that way you will only see the things that are related to or produced by South Carolina. So if you use all state subscriptions, it will give you just South Carolina information. And then the bottom one right below all state subscriptions says skip to main content. And what that does is it basically clears off all the extraneous stuff so you don't have to use that stuff and you can print better using the skip to main content. And we'll talk about actually printing forms later. 
So on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a little blue box with a list of things underneath it. It says South Carolina Legal Forms. If you click in here, you're going to get the state subscription. So you'll get the things that South Carolina provides. So again, that all state subscriptions allows you access to just the South Carolina legal forms. Under the next one, legal definitions, you can look for a definition for a, a related terminology for something legal. For an example, lots of kids go joyriding. You can actually click over here on legal definitions. It's going to change the page and show you the legal definition segment up here. You can either click on the J here, or you can actually type in here the word joyriding. And when you hit the search button, it's going to come up and give you the legal definition for joyriding. You just click on that particular word and it comes up and there it is. So now you have a definition of joyriding and it's the legal definition. So it's what the laws and the courts use to define joyriding. So below that, over here on the left, we have tax forms. If you click on tax forms, it will come up and it will give you the basic federal tax forms on here. And it will also, you'll notice, come down and it'll go into the state forms. Now, I just went looking on the South Carolina DOR site yesterday and I found the South Carolina forms for this year. So I want to see, yes, it takes you out to the DOR website and then you would click on individual if you were an individual business, if you were a business. Here, if you do individual income, it's going to come up and it's going to tell you about what you can do. And then over here, you'll have forms and it's going to give you the tax years. So this is another way in which you can get that information. So let me back out of this in just a second here. We'll go on down to the next piece. So the next piece is that attorney directory and this is broken down by the state and the practice area. And if again, you choose to use one of these, you probably want South Carolina since that's where you're at. And it's going to give you some coaching ahead of time. And then down here at the bottom, it gives you all of the different areas in which these, these folks practice. And if there is somebody in South Carolina who is in one of those practices and is willing to talk to you, then again, you may do this, but they will charge for their services and they are not related to or sponsored by the Kershaw County Library, just so you know. The next one over on the left is um, the external links. This is really nice because if you're not for sure how to find these, you can actually get into them quickly. There is one correction on there that we need to make. The South Carolina Vital Records Services, it, that is the incorrect link. I have some notes if you ever need to find out what that correct one is, I will send those notes to you and you'll have that information. But the, the piece that comes up under Vital Records Services is a European site, um, don't know how that happened, but the South Carolina DHEC website is the place that you go to to find your vital records information. So all of these are available to you. When you click on those, it will move you over to that website, just like it did with the um, tax forms and that sort of thing. So you have an opportunity to go on ahead and fill that stuff out, and then you can come back and get right back into legal forms and find out the next piece of information that you need. So the next thing on here is the Law Digest. And again, it's one where you can click on a letter or type something in. And in this case, I'm going to look for juvenile law because we have um, different levels at which 
the law works. They're the ones for the juveniles and the ones for the adult. And so if you do that, the law digest is going to come up and it's going to give you juvenile law. And when you click on it, it is going to come up and it's going to give you the history, what's happening today, further references that are out there and any cross references that you might need. So there's a lot of information here. And again, this can be printed out. So if you want to print something from just this page, if you do a right click and you do print, it's going to come up and it's going to allow you to print. And then it's going to show you a sample of what will print. So I'm going to cancel this because I don't really need to print it, but it is available for you to print off of this. The next one down is the legal Q&A. And this is just for information. It is not something that you want to take to heart. It will always be governed by what your state laws contain versus what the legal advice on here is. So your state has control of that. The national does not. But along with this, you're going to have the question categories. And again, there's a lot of stuff on here. And it's going to give you information dealing with each one of those. So you'll notice that you've got drugs, DUI, education, and then here you have subsets with the little arrows of compulsory education and student rights. So not only is it going to look at the big picture, it's going to be more detailed in some areas. So you'll be able to go in a little deeper if you need to. And again, anything that's on here, you will be able to print out. So let me come back up here to the top of the page again. And legal life articles are very limited. And it's a short list of things that are out there. And these articles go into a little bit more depth for instance, if I click on owning a business, it's going to come up and it's going to walk you through all the things that you need to know about owning a business. And it goes into much more detail. So this is, again, something you can print out and read um, later, or if you want to, you can write, read it right here on the screen, but it's going to be able to produce some information for you. And the last one on this list over here is called Helpful Topics. And these are, again, topics. They're not going to be forms. They're going to be the topics. So in this case, if I clicked on, let me see if I can find it on here, Business Property, it's going to come up and it's going to give you the information about what business property is and how it's seen. So again, that's something you can print out and you can take a look at it um, on your own time or you can read it on the screen. So those are all the things that are listed under the South Carolina legal forms. If you want to go on to a bigger, better bunch of things, right below that, South Carolina information on the left hand side, there's the most popular legal form searches. And I find it um, interesting. They must have these listed by way of how often that they get used. Um, so the first one is divorce, and then there's wills and estates and real estate and bankruptcy and so on, and it goes on down. And so this is another area where you can take a look and see what things out there might be helpful to you. And they're basically a one-click collection to the forms. So if I come down here and I click on incorporation, it's going to come up and it's going to give me a list of the forms. Now here's where things get interesting. You will notice that it says these are search results for incorporation. And there are 46 forms found. But over here to the side, you see some of these have the letters SC and some of them have the letters US. 
So the ones that start out with SC are South Carolina forms. The ones that start out with US are the ones that you would need to check with somebody in the legal field to make sure that they're going to be usable in South Carolina. And so all of these are forms. So in this case, if I wanted to see what a corporation certificate is, a certificate of incorporation, if I click on the title of that, now bear in mind this is a, a US one, it is not a South Carolina one, but what you're going to find is it's going to come up and this is a record page and it tells you a few things. At the top, it tells you that this is the Certificate of Incorporation General Form. It tells you that it's from the United States and not a particular state. It gives a control number. So if you ever have one of those control numbers, you can try typing that in as well. And then it tells you about the things that you can download. You can either use Microsoft Word or you can use rich text. Um, both of those will open in Microsoft Word, but you'll be able to use whichever one you like. Occasionally when you print one of these forms, they're going to come up as being downloaded as PDF. And we may or may not see that today, but that's the third alternative. So under this form, it gives you a description of what this form is used for. So it gives you lots of information on there as to what that is. And then next door to that, there's a preview button. And if I click preview, it's going to show me what that form looks like. Now you can't print from this page, this particular page. That's why this big preview is across here. But if that's the proper form that you need, then you can go back up to the top of the screen and click on Microsoft Word. And it's going to open up the form in just a minute. I'm gonna click on this down here to get it to open up. When the Microsoft Word document opens up, you're going to see at the top a gold bar that says enable editing. Before you can do anything with the document, you're going to have to click that gold box that says Enable Editing, and it will disappear from the screen, and it will look like a normal Microsoft Word document that you can work with. If you have one of the ones that can be filled in before printing, if you click at each blank on the, on the document, you will be able to enter the information and then you'd be able to print it out at the fall at the at the end when you're finished. In some cases, some of the documents will not let you fill them in online, so you are going to have to actually print those documents, fill them out by hand and re, um, present those as a handwritten document. Now, when you print one of the forms, it's just like you're printing a Word document or a PDF. So however you do that from home, you can do that from home. Here in the library, when you click on that print and you tell it to, to send it to the printer, it's going to tell you how much that print is going to cost you. And then you have to tell it that's okay. And then you'll have to tell it a second time to go ahead and print before it will send it to the queue to be printed. But that is basically how you open a form. So there's lots of information on here that you can delve into. I want to actually go back up to the to the main page. So let me go back up here to home. And we're going to walk through a couple of things on the front page, the home page. At here, up here at the very top, it says, Welcome to the South Carolina Legal Forms Library. And it tells you that there are several ways to use this resource. That's why I'm taking this kind of a step-by-step for you because each one um, is going to be another option for you to be able to use and you will use whatever you feel the most comfortable with. I do want to point out again on here that now there's a new way in which you can do some things that there is a selection of legal documents that can be completed using web forms now and it gives you the link to go out to do that. So if you use that, just remember, probably not a good idea at the library. Um, at home, that'll be up to you. So right below that, you've got browse categories by alphabet. And in this case, I'm going to click on the B. And it's going to open up and it's going to give me a list of things beginning with B. And so I'm going to choose bills of sale. 
And again, it's going to open up. It's going to keep narrowing things down for you. So it's going to begin to open up and then it's going to give you all the different things that you might have as something that you have sold or that sort of thing. I want to point out on here, these also have Spanish language information. So please feel free to go in and use Spanish language should you need that. But on here, say we sold something that was personal property. If I click on that, it's going to come up and it's going to give me a selection of choices to use for the, fo the um, form that we need. And again, you would just click on the form, let it open up and print it out. Reading the little description and looking at the preview are extra as well. So I'm going to go back up to the top and we're going to go back to home. And this time down here under browse the main categories. See, this is the main categories tab. I could just simply click on bills of sale from here and it's going to take me to the same information. So again, that's one of those times where it's an either or whichever way is most comfortable for you to do it. You'll be able to do that. And then finally, there are some things here that are called sample searches. And under sample searches, it gives you a wide variety of things that you can use. And you will notice down here that we have bill of sale form, bill of sale auto, and bill of sale boat. So those are probably the ones that are most used. So if I did just bill of sale form, it's going to come up and it's going to give me that information. If we were looking for articles of incorporation, if you click on that, it's going to come up and again, it's going to give you the corporations and what those are. And notice up here, these are the incorporation articles that you would need to use in order to get your company incorporated. And again, these are South Carolina forms at the top and US forms below that. Now, when you go and look for this information up here at the top, you have a search bo box as well. I'm going to take out article incorporation. We don't need that information right now. Um, but there are three ways to look for it. We've done some browsing already, but we'll talk about that again in a few minutes. But when you do your searches, there are a couple of things that you need to look at. At the top of the page, you'll see that long white box and next to it is the little search button. You can actually click into that box and you can type in the information or the search terms that you are looking for. If you know what form you need, this is the best place to go because you can just type in the form name. If you don't know what you need and you're not sure, then you can do the browse side of it, which we did before where we, um, took a look at the, big, the bigger picture rather than the, the smaller picture. Since the South Carolina forms, the South Carolina specific forms are limited, you can use that box at the top, the search legal forms box at the top to look for the wider, more expansive group of both South Carolina and US. And there are four things that you need to know when you search. You cannot use and or or to connect terms. You can't use quotation marks to note, make note of something being a phrase in this type of search. It won't let you do that. You can't use a parenthetical statement with the, with the parent parentheses around it in a search. And you need to use a single word or a combination of words for the search, but you just can't connect them or, you know, do any special features in order to find the form that you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to put something in here on purpose. A lot of people make this mistake. I used to make it myself, so I can't say anything about anybody else making it. But when you type in something that you think is the title of the deed, in this case, it's a deed that I'm looking for, um, 
when you're children, you sort of pick up words from what your parents say or from what other people around you say, and you absorb that. And for many, many years, I thought it was called a quick claim deed, but that is not the proper term. So if I tell it I want to search for quick claim deed, it's going to come up and it's going to give me results for quit claim, Q-U-I-T-C-L-A-I-M. So it automatically knows that's not the proper term. Let's give them the proper term and the proper pieces. So if you make a spelling error, it may return with something that it knows is what you're looking for, or it may return with something like, I can't find anything. So please bear in mind that if you make a misspelling, it's sort of like using the Google search feature and it's going to give you, okay, you put this, but I think it might be this, but just in a slightly different way. So here is the list for me for South Carolina forms. I'm going to actually open the first one here because I want to see, yeah, it doesn't have it. I was try trying to see if it had the uh, PDF form, but it doesn't have that. I will tell you, I'm going to go back and open the, this up again. You see right up here where it says real estate, deeds, quit claims. That's the category that it's under. So if you can't find what you're looking for with something specific, you can look for the word deeds up here and it will give you a longer list. And so in this case, 200 forms were found instead of the 40 some we had before. And it's going to go through all of them. So if you're looking for something specific, be specific. If you're looking for something general, you might have to be general. So when you do the something like the quit claim deed, that's more the most specific you can get. And probably the wider span of that is going to be real estate. If you're looking for a subject through that search, use the term that you think most closely matches um, because that will be the one that will give you a smaller amount. If you look for a keyword like deed or um, real estate or something like that, and you get a huge number of forms, like this one has 200, rather than roll through all of the forms, you might try narrowing, narrowing that search. And to do that, um, you would do instead of deed, you would tell it you want a warranty deed or a quick claim deed or however, whatever kind of deed that you need to have. And that will make it a little easier for you to find them. So that is pretty much everything that I can show you on here, except for one thing. You remember earlier we talked over here about um, the most popular legal forms. I'm going to pull up wills and estates. Now in South Carolina, there are some things that are not available that are available in other states when it comes to um, wills and that sort of thing. So what this is going to come up with is a list of 42, film, 42 forms that have been found. And it's going to walk you through. These are all South Carolina wills. And it will walk you through them and you can take a look and see which one that you feel is most appropriate. Um, one of the things that you will not find among the wills on South Carolina is a living will. So I'm going to click in up here and I'm going to type in living will and it's going to come up and show you that it is not called a living will. I know it says here living wills and healthcare packages but it's not a living will. <laughs> um, here in South Carolina, they do what they call a declaration of desire of natural death and that sort of thing rather than 
the full on what we what other states call a living will so up here there's a personal planning set and it says package just like the living wills and healthcare packages up there that way if you need to print out all of them if you click on that it's going to open every single one of those files that you need as one unit and you will be able to look for them and be able to print them out and they'll list right here and then down here it gives you some selections that you can use to help lower down what or narrow down what it is that you need and then it's also going to give you the list of documents from online that you can fill out so this is something that you would be able to use to quickly go through and get the forms that you need for one one item there are some things that you're going to find on here some oddball things on here some of the documents cannot be edited so you can't make changes to it and so those are ones that you have to actually print those documents and fill in behind by hand whether you want to or not that's what they're going to make you do and in some cases you're going to see something called a court sample and what the court sample is is one where somebody has already filled it out and it shows it in its filled out state um, those cannot be printed and they cannot be used in a court of law because those are just ideas for how they will look when you have them completed so please don't try to use one of the court samples the court's going to say nope sorry can't use that um, but you can open the form that matches it and it's blank and you can fill in that form and read and turn that in as part of your court paperwork and the court will accept your paperwork but not the court sample so does anybody have a question and i'm going to say thank you there are actually four separate programs in this series the a to z databases i will be doing next week unfortunately i was not available to do it on its first date um, so please feel free to watch that one if you want to um, then we'll move on to the small business reference center and finally we will do the business source premiere including company profiles and that gets you into the more deep information about businesses and how you in find that information so i really appreciate you coming um, as i mentioned earlier this is going to be posted at some point on the library's youtube page and you can go there or you can look for more information about future classes on the kershaw county library website thank you so much for joining me i appreciate it bye